All right, now moving over to the amp portion of the plugin, we have a master volume setting. Okay, now that's all this is, is just your output volume. And that's very, very important for this plugin specifically because you're gonna start off working with really pure tones uh, when you're just at the oscillator phase of things. And you wanna be really, really sure that you're not really uh, taxing your ears too much with those pure tones uh, because initially this is not gonna be set at negative 12 dB. It might blast your ears off if you're not careful. So be sure to set that low and work your way up. Then we have a sine level knob down here at the bottom. Okay, now there's a sine wave that can reinforce your shape one oscillator in this plugin. Now a sine wave, if you're unfamiliar, is just the purest tone uh, wave that you can work with. So no harmonic content, it's just that frequency. And this would be good for reinforcing that note uh, having it stand out more, really reinforcing the bass especially. So let's go ahead and lift it up, find that sweet spot uh, for where we want it in this harmony. All right, I found the sweet spot at point four. Uh, and I didn't want it to be too over the top because I didn't want it to take away from some of the lower register instruments in the mix like the bass guitar, for example. Uh, and I also just didn't want to have nothing because uh, I kind of enjoyed the uh, fullness that I got out of increasing that sine level. So 0.4 is what we're gonna be sticking with for the rest of the tutorial. Next, we have the effect portion of RetroSynth. And we have a couple options here in terms of effects that we can add on uh, to this sound. So we have a chorus and a flanger effect. Now I have tutorials on both of these topics and the plugins associated with them in Logic if you wanna go really in depth uh, and learn about how they function. But we're gonna do a basic overview here. We're gonna start with the chorus effect. Okay, now a chorus effect duplicates your signal. Okay, so two signals you've got now. And it takes the duplicated one and it delays it slightly from the first and then it modulates that delay time. Okay, so if you got one moving uh, a little bit after the signal, the original signal. And if you modulate that delay time, it gives you a very widening and separating effect. All right, so we have a mix knob that's gonna affect how much of that chorus effect we hear, and then the rate of modulation. So that's kind of like the LFO, right? We're actually using an LFO in this case as well. And that's the rate at which that delay time is being modulated. So let's figure out kind of a slow pulsing uh, chorus effect that we can add to this, because I want something slow for this pad that we're creating not something too distracting. All right, chorus effects do a really good job of cutting through, especially with lead instruments. Uh, so maybe I don't wanna go with chorus, maybe I wanna go with a flanger effect. Now flanger effects, it's the same concept as the chorus, okay? We're modulating that delay time. Even though with flangers, we tend to be working with shorter delay times, so keep that in mind. Uh, but also there's something in a flanger uh, called feedback, where we feed back that delayed signal uh, through the flanger again, and we get something called a comb filter effect, okay? And that creates a very spacey uh, kind of movement through the frequency spectrum, okay? So it's gonna give it some uh, spaciness, uh, and it's not gonna cut through as much as a chorus does, so that might be something we're looking for. Let's see if we can find the sweet spot on the mix level and the rate, because we have the same parameters here. All right, I went with a slow rate again because you notice it starts to kind of change the pitch a bit when you have it too fast. Same with the chorus effect. You're gonna to start to get some uh, pitch modulation, which you probably don't want too much of if you're really trying to establish this as a core part of your harmony. <laughs> 